JSON Web Tokens are everywhere, but unfortunately, most developers do not really understand them. Four years ago, I wrote my first ever article on Medium titled JSON Web Tokens, the only explanation you'll ever need. It helped tens of thousands of engineers understand JSON Web Tokens. So I decided to make a video version and you're watching it right now. Let's go. Let's take a real world JSON Web Token example. Imagine you want to sign into your bank account and check your balance or maybe send a payment to someone. There are two important concepts at play here, authentication and authorization. Authentication is the process of identifying a user through their credentials. So you go to the website, you type in your email and password, and then you get access. At this point, you are authenticated. Upon successful authentication, the user will be issued two things. The first one is the refresh token. We're going to talk about that later in the video. The second one is the access token. This is a JSON web token, and it's used for authorization. Authorization is the process of verifying your permissions to make sure you have access to the actions, resources, or services you are trying to access. For example, do you actually own the account you're trying to check the balance for? The authorization part is where many applications use JSON web tokens. These are usually provided in the authorization editor as a bearer token. Now, before we take a deeper dive into the anatomy of JSON web tokens, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. I work really hard to produce very high quality content for you so you can get better and learn faster. All right, let's take a deeper look into the anatomy of a JSON web token. It consists of three parts. The first part is the header. It contains some metadata about the token, like what type of token it is, Ahem, it's a JSON web token, and the algorithm that is being used to create the signature that we're gonna talk about in just a minute. The second part, the most interesting part, is the payload of the token. There are some recommended fields in the JWT standard that you'll pretty much always find in there. For example, the issuer field. Who issued that token? Is that some authentication service, an OAuth provider? Then there is the subject. That will be you. If you use a JWT to identify a user, then you would typically put the user ID in that subject field because the user is the subject of the token. The next field is expiry. It's going to be a Unix timestamp of when this token is not valid anymore. And then there is issued at, a timestamp of when this token was issued by the server. So these are just the standard ones. Typically, you would add more claims that you need for your application. For example, the name of the user, their email, their organization ID, and sometimes even their access level. And we're going to cover this part in the video as well. Now, the last part in the JSON web token is the signature. And if you manage to understand how signatures work, you're going to understand everything. When a JWT is issued to a user, the authenticating server needs to sign that token. And what that signature means is basically, I'm the authority that issued this token and these payload, like the subject, the email, the name, the organization ID, or whatever is in the token, I use this signature to guarantee that this is 100% true. So how does this signature work? The server will take some secret value, for example, very secret one, two, three, and then it will take the header and the payload and run it through a hashing function to output the signature. So the signature is just a hash that is created based on the payload and the header in the token. And again, that signature is included in the token itself. Now for the really important part, how does authorization work? How do we verify the signature of a JSON web token? So when you send a token to a server, it will take the header and the payload, run it through the exact same hashing algorithm to produce a signature and then compare that to the signature that the user has provided in the token. If the signature is match, that's great. That means that the token is legit and it was not altered or messed with. If the signature does not match, then the authorization fails. So it's important to understand that JSON web tokens are not really encrypted and decrypted, but they're actually encoded. Anyone can view and alter JSON web tokens. They're encoded using base64. And in fact, you could grab any JSON web token and paste it into JWT.io. You can see all of the claims, which is why you should never store sensitive information in JSON web tokens. You can even try to change fields. For example, change the role from a user to an admin. And look what happened. I just hacked the system, right? I'm an admin now. Well, unfortunately not, because the next time I try to authorize with this token, the signature is not going to match. The next important thing to understand about JSON web tokens is that they are stateless. What does that exactly mean? Here's a scenario where JSON web tokens really, really shine. 
Imagine Netflix. It's a huge company with probably thousands of services, stuff like billing, video streaming, catalog, and so on. The user will need to interact with many of those services. And here is where statelessness is great. JSON Web Tokens contains all of the information that these services will need to process their request in the tokens themselves. Again, user ID, organization ID, and so on. So if I'm fetching a video from Netflix and I'm sending a ton of requests to fetch these packets, for example, the streaming service does not need to take every single one of my requests and validate it against some database or against some auth server of some kind. All right, let's talk about refresh tokens. So now you understand JWTs better. And theoretically, you could build your app, generate JWTs for your users with one year expiry and just have them use them and everything is going to be fine, right? Well, there are two issues here. The first one is that JSON web tokens are like passports. If you manage to steal somebody else's JWT and provide it in the authorization header, then congratulations, you have impersonated that person and you can make actions on their behalf. The second problem is that the claims of the token may change. Maybe my access level has changed from admin to user. And if my token only expires in one year, well, again, it's stateless. It contains my role and the services will take that role as something legitimate. And unlike traditional server sessions, JSON web tokens cannot be invalidated by the server. So here's how we solve this. Ideally, JSON web tokens are going to be very short lived. I'm talking five minutes, two minutes, and I've even seen one minute. Every time the token expire, the user will send a request to refresh that token. And remember that refresh token I talked about earlier that was issued upon successful authentication, that token is saved in the database and associated with the user ID or with a certain session, maybe a device. So then the user, whenever the JSON web token, the access token expires, can provide their refresh token and say, hey, I am who I claim I am. You issued me this refresh token. Now I need a new access token. That is a JSON web token. And that one, again, is going to be very short lived and so on and so forth. So refreshing the token is going to mitigate the two risks. One, that somebody will steal your tokens. If they manage to steal it, well, it just got refreshed pretty quickly, so it's not valid anymore. And the second thing is that the tokens don't represent the real state of thing. For example, I change my name, I move to a different organization. When the tokens are refreshed more frequently, the claims are more likely to be up to date. Now, if you are really sharp, you're probably asking yourself, hey, so we have these refresh tokens, they can be stolen as well, right? A common way to tackle this is to rotate the refresh tokens every time the token gets used. So for example, my access token has expired, and then I send a refresh request to the auth server saying, hey, I need a new access token, I provide my refresh token. Then once that's successful, the server is going to get rid of that old refresh token and issue me a new one. And every time I refresh the token, I'm going to get a new refresh token. And that means that even if an attacker managed to get access to my refresh token, the first time I refresh it, it's not valid anymore. I know all this security stuff is very complicated and hard to digest, but you have to admit that it's super fascinating. So congrats, you just learned the things that most developers don't really know or understand about JSON web tokens. Here's a recap. So the first thing is that JSON web tokens are stateless. That means we can serve millions and millions of users without having to send requests to our auth servers for every single request. The second thing is that the payload of the JSON web tokens should not be trusted at all times. There are certain sensitive or destructive operations like changing a password, deleting an account and stuff like that, where it's better to not use a JSON web token. The third one is to make sure you issue short lived JSON web tokens to prevent cases where the claims are outdated or mitigate risks in the case of Theft. Also, make sure to rotate the refresh tokens per session. Folks, the video today is packed with valuable information. So if you manage to watch until here and stay focused, kudos to you. I've put a ton of effort into this video. So if you liked it, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching until the end and see you next time.